Hey everyone, it's great to have you back. The topic of today's video is going to concern how to arc direct your volumetric clouds. Now, anyone who's ever used the volumetric clouds as of Unreal 4.26 knows that, you know, they're kind of limited in what you can do. There's not much documentation on how to set these up to have a bit more control. But fortunately, Chris Murphy over at Twitter kind of put me on the right track and made me aware that having full control over the placement of your clouds is even a thing. So I got to give credit where credit is due. Thank you so much, Chris. You're the best. Now, with that being said, I'm going to take this to the next level and show you how you can set up your scene correctly and have full control over the art direction of your clouds. No, not, not you, the creepy clown behind you. And so, why wait? Let's go. Okay, so before we get started, there's two things we need to do here. So the first of which is going to the settings tab up top, click on this and make sure that we click on the plugins window, open up the plugins and here we'll search for volumetrics. Make sure that the volumetric plugin is enabled. If it's not there, you're not going to be able to play the volumetric clouds. So make sure that's enabled, restart the engine and we're ready to go. And before we get started, there's still one last thing we need to do and that is Paying attention to right here. So notice in my content browser here, I've got just my content folder. There is still one thing we need to enable to, act, to access all the settings that we need for this tutorial. And you'll notice at the bottom right here, we've got view options. We're going to click on this and make sure that show engine content is selected. And now notice on the left hand side here, we've got a whole crap load of other folders. You're going to see why we need to enable this real soon. So hang tight. Now we're ready to get started and have a little bit of fun with our clouds. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a volumetric cloud system. So you click on visual effects here, volumetric clouds. We're going to click on this, bring them in and you'll notice right away like, okay, cool. We've got clouds, but by default, they don't look very good, right? Yes. In the details panel here, there's a few settings that we can tweak, but you know, ultimately you don't have that much control over the art direction of your clouds. Now, with that being said, we can edit the material that is in the volumetric cloud right here. And, you know, we can play around with these settings like this, but we don't really have control over, you know, the position of the cloud. And that is what this tutorial is about. So I'm going to close this and let's get to the juicy part of this tutorial. So with our new engine content folders here, let's scroll all the way down to V where it says volumetrics content. We're going to click on this folder and we're going to click on the tools folder right here, cloud compositing, blueprints, and we have two blueprints right here, one called BP cloud mask object and the other one called BP cloud mask generator. I'm going to click both of these and I'm going to drag these into the scene. So you'll see one of the actors, the cloud mask object is freakishly huge. It is massive. I'm going to, just going to move this guy away way, way, way over here. Now you'll notice nothing really happened. What's happening, right? What do we want to do here? So the next step involves changing the material that's on the volumetric clouds actor. So we're going to select a volumetric clouds actor here. And in the volumetric content, we're going to go to content sky materials. And you'll see, we have a whole bunch of new materials here, a whole lot. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use volumetric cloud 03 profiles underscore billowy, drag this into the material slot of our volumetric cloud actor. And now, cool, we, we lost our clouds. What next? So what we're going to do here, we're going to select this um, BP cloud mask object here, and we're going to scale it up by a lot. Okay, so I'm going to scale this bad boy up to like you know, 24, 25 or something and move him way further away. But now notice how the position of our BP cloud mask object, it has gives us full control over the position of the clouds. So let me get a bird's eye view here so you can get a better idea of what's happening. Okay, so now, now that we're way high up in the sky, we can see that, hey, our cloud is moving around. If I duplicate this, I can have as many clouds as I want. Now, obviously the shape of this cloud is garbage. It looks like a hot steaming pile of crap. Um, how do we fix this? So we're going to select the first one here that I created in the details panel. I'm going to go ahead and 
you'll notice that there's noise settings. I'm going to also click the show debug button right here. And you'll notice we've got a uh, kind of a red marker showing up around where our, our actor is, right? So this debug plane here, it's going to show us what the shape of our cloud is going to be like. Okay. So in the noise settings, I'm going to increase the noise intensity by one. And now you'll notice, hey, something, the, the shape has changed totally. And now we're getting a more interesting shape, right? Now see how this looks just way, way, way better. I'm going to do the same for the other two here. Set this noise intensity to one. And now we're getting some more interesting shapes. So right now, just like that, in just a few steps, we have some much more interesting clouds already. I'm going to break, change the tiling or the seed rather right here. And let's go back to the ground level and see how this looks. So now I'm going to uncheck the uh, show debug. And now we have full control over the very position of all our clouds in our scene. Now let's say, for example, you know, it's cool that we can play at the cloud, but we still want to have a bit more control over the look of these cloud. We want to push it even further. So there's two things you can do. We can go back to our volumetric cloud actor here and play around with the the height of our clouds, you know, the, the, the bottom layer, the, the height of them, how tall the clouds are, like this. Um, you can choose, there's no right or wrong setting here. You can do whatever you think looks best. But what we're, we're going to do here is we're going to select the volumetric cloud actor again and edit this material. Okay, so again, like I showed you earlier, we can kind of choose like the density of this material. We can affect change the detail of it, how much detail there is. There's a whole plethora of different settings. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. You're going to have to be the judge and just choose what you think looks best. Okay, now just keep in mind the cloud mask object blueprint here, the size of this directly affects how your clouds look, right? So I'm scaling these up or down, moving them around. This has a huge and tremendous impact on the look of your scene. So you'll notice that there's a whole bunch more materials here. Let's go ahead and see the name of some of them. You'll notice that what some of them are called for example, profiles underscore paint clouds. Okay, so any of the materials that have underscore paint clouds in the material name, they're not going to work by default. You're going to need to tweak the master material for this to work with the cloud mask objects. Okay. And the reason for that is because these paint cloud materials are made for, you know, another type of cloud painting, which is outside the scope of this tutorial. So let's see what happens if I, you know, drag this paint cloud material onto our volumetric cloud material. Okay. I got to drag, drag and drop this here and okay. Our clouds look different, but you'll notice if I move the cloud mask object around, we're not affecting the look of our sky anymore. It doesn't have any effect on the position of our cloud. We've lost that ability. How do we fix this? I'm going to show you how to change this material so that you, this works with the cloud mask objects. Okay. So what we're going to do is you can feel free to duplicate this material so that you don't overwrite the original. I'm just going to show you guys what you need to change in order to get the cloud mask objects to work with these materials. So I'm going to open up this master material here and you'll notice that it is a cluster. It is such a mess of spaghetti noodles, but don't worry. There's only one thing we need to change and let's go here. You'll see there's a texture object right here called T underscore cloud mask storm. Okay. Right up here, zoom in right here. This is the texture we need to change. You're going to find that in volumetric content. We're going to go to tools, cloud compositing, render targets. And why is that? Because what these blueprints are doing, the cloud mask blueprint is that they're creating a render target. Basically, this is what drives the position of the cloud. So you'll see right here, we've got RT underscore cloud mask underscore zero one. Let's drag and drop this in here. We're going to replace that texture and hit save in the master material. I'm going to close this. And now, finally, now we can move our clouds around. Now you'll notice they kind of look pretty bad. Don't worry, we can tweak this. There's lots that we can change again. So I'm going to open up that material again by going to my volumetric cloud. But I'm going to make a material instance of the paint clouds so that we just changed, right? So right click, create material instance. And drag the material instance into our volumetric cloud material. I'm going to open up this instance so we have a much simpler, you know, menu to work with. And now I'm going to tweak the bias. 
bottom noise. Again, guys, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right or wrong settings to use. It all depends on what you want in your scene, okay? I just want to show you guys how we can tweak these materials, how we can affect the look of our clouds. Um, so, you know, don't bother with trying to get the exact settings here because they're kind of irrelevant. You're, you're going to have to go around and play with this to get the look that you want. Now we have full control over the position of our clouds again. And you'll notice they look they look pretty different, and they I think these look pretty cool. So... Again, if you, I'm noticing that they feel a little bit too tall, too stretched uh, vertically. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the layer height and kind of bring these down to a more reasonable level. And in our cloud mask object, I'm going to play around with the noise seed again, change the noise tiling, something like that. And just like that, we're trying to get a bit more control over the look of our scene. I'm going to duplicate this. And maybe even scale this guy even way bigger. And you'll notice that just like that, it is easier than ever to really art direct your clouds or your skies the way that you want them to look. I hope this is making a little bit of sense. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but I'm going to delete all this and redo it from scratch just so you guys can get a, just a quick recap of what you need to do. So I'm going to select everything here and delete that and delete my volumetric clouds. Done. Start from scratch one more time. So we're going to add another volumetric clouds here. And again, we need to go back and place our new blueprints, which is going to be in volumetric content. If you don't have the this folder here, don't forget to go enable show engine content. And then we're going to go to the tools, cloud compositing, blueprints, cloud mask object, cloud mask generator. <clears throat> cloud mask object, I'm going to... Move this guy way head the heck back. And the last thing we need to do now, I set the scale to like 25 or something. And now we just need to change the material on our volumetric cloud actor. So I'm going to go find that in volumetric content, content, sky, materials, and I'm going to use profiles billowy. Drag this here. And just like that, now we're starting to get something a bit more interesting. It's really as simple as that. It works out of the box. There's not that much to change. There's no master materials or complex materials to set up. This works pretty darn well out of the box. You can get them very stylized looks too. And again, let's go into the bird's eye view just to get a better look at what we're doing here. Something like that. And I'm going to change, of course, the noise intensity of my cloud mask object to something like 1 to break this up even further. Same with this thing. Head to 1. Break it up further, and now now we have better, even better control over the look of our material. Now I don't again I don't like how tall these are, so I'm going to go into volumetric cloud and change the layer height to kind of bring them down to a more reasonable level, and we're starting to get some pretty nice looking clouds here. So I hope this kind of makes sense. I know it's like I said I know it's a lot to take in, but now getting the exact look that you want is easier than ever. Um, having the ability to position clouds the way you want makes such a big impact and when you're really trying to get a shot to look really good and you know you got your camera all set up and you just want the cloud to look perfect this is the way to do it now just one last bonus tip for you guys in the event that you want to delete your clouds what you need to do is select your cloud mask objects delete them but you'll see hey my clouds are still there how do i get rid of them you just need to go to your cloud mask generator in your outliner right here. And you'll see right here where it says render clouds. And by clicking that, it's going to update your render targets and all the clouds that you deleted will be gone. It's really as simple as that. And that concludes yet another video. Thank you so much for watching guys. Again, if you have any questions or something's not working, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you if possible. I can't make any promises, but don't take it personally if I don't. It's not because I'm ignoring you, I promise. So as always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
and I'll see you guys next week.